So today's video is a makeup tutorial on the look I'm wearing right now. It's a really easy smoky eye. I know all my looks are really easy. That must get a little annoying. But it's a really easy look that looks a little bit more dramatic and looks a little bit more complicated than it is because it's so smoky and so intense. And I feel like it is eye-catching and captivating. I am using a few of my Zodiac pigments, but the main star is the Archer. So this is for all you Sagittarius out there. I'm actually wearing this look in a video that's coming up soon, but I'm pretty sure I'm posting this video before you see that one. But it's been really requested to do tutorials with my pigments, and so I thought I'd bring another one to you guys today. I'm also testing out a few products in today's video, like my foundation, my primer, and just a couple other things, and I give you my thoughts on them as well. But yeah, uh, that's it, right? If you want to see how to get this really fun purpley blue smoky eye, then just keep watching. Okay, so I've already primed my eyelids with some eyeshadow primer, and now I'm gonna go in to the LC The Minimalist palette, but this is the Mauve series. And I'm actually just gonna use this color in the palette. I really love this shade. It's like a perfect creasy mauve color. Very pretty. And I'm just gonna use this color in my crease, slowly building it up little by little. Okay, now I'm gonna take the star of the show. This is the Archer Pigment from ColourPop. And this is the color I'm gonna be putting on my entire lid, but I am gonna take a little bit of it dry, like on a crease brush. And I'm just gonna dip it into the cap. And I just wanna apply this color in the crease, just so that everything blends better and meshes better once we put down the pigment on the lid. Okay, now I'm gonna take that same pigment and I'm gonna apply a little bit of Fix Plus in the cap because I do wanna go in with this color wet all over the lid. So just a little bit. And I'm just gonna apply this to my entire lid. This color does get more intense the more you wet it and the more you build on it. So we are gonna be starting off little by little, applying more as we go, blending as we go. And then with that same brush, this is like a fluffy flat shader brush. This is from the Makeup Shack, it's the T53. I'm gonna start bending my brush and just blending the crease out a bit, making sure there are no harsh lines. Okay, so I just cleaned up the area underneath my eyes because I had a lot of fallout. I'm gonna take the Too Faced Glitter Glue and I am going to start pressing this all over my lid. I'm not gonna take it up into the crease. I'm mainly focusing this on like the lower part, I mean the bottom, the lower half of my lid, what? You know what I mean, you know what I mean. And then with the pigment, I'm going in with it dry. So I put some on the back of my cap. It's completely dry, but I'm just putting it over the glitter glue. And doing this is really gonna bring out that teal undertone, really bring out the duochromeness in this shadow. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this eye, of course. And then again, with some dry pigment on the brush I used earlier, I'm just gonna blend out the edges. Okay, now I'm gonna start off with my face. I'm gonna do my foundation, concealer, and my powder, and then I'll finish up the eyes. So I have a few things to test out for the first time in today's video, and I'm very, very, very excited. I have this Kopari Starry Eye Balm that I just bought off of Sephora, and it's a silky, nourishing coconut eye balm that delivers a dose of caffeine to depuff and illuminate tired eyes. I bought it mainly because it said it had caffeine in it, and my under eyes need some caffeine sometimes, especially these days. <laughs> So I am just adding some of this underneath the eyes. It smells exactly like rose. I wonder if that's an ingredient. Coconut oil, coffee oil, hyaluronic acid. Ooh, hyaluronic acid. That's like the new rage these days, isn't it? Um, it smells like roses to me, so I'm not super big on the scent. I don't know if I'm applying too much. I'll let you know if I see a difference or if this just becomes a greasy hot mess underneath the eyes. But for a primer, I actually have two to test out. And I asked you guys on Instagram stories, I did like a little poll. I asked you guys which one you wanted me to use first, like which one you guys wanted me to test out first. And it was 55% of you said this one and 45% of you said this one. So a lot of you guys still wanted to see this one. 
but this one won. This is the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Hyaluronic Hydrating Primer. I am so excited to try this. I love First Aid Beauty. But this one is also really interesting too. This is the Ula Henriksen Banana Bright Face Primer. It has vitamin C and banana powder. So let's see, let's see. I wonder if this is like what skin type this is targeted for or is it for everyone? Ooh, smells very, very citrusy. I know vitamin C is really good for this skin and it helps brighten everything up, so hopefully I like this. Online it says it's for all skin types, so that's nice. It does feel pretty hydrating. I mean, I just put it on, but we'll see. I normally wouldn't try out a new foundation or face or base product while trying a new primer at the same time, but since I'm not doing a wear test today, we're just using all new stuff in today's video. I'm obviously gonna test out these products separately as well, but I'm going in with the Jane I don't know how to say this brand. Is it Jane Iredale? Jane Iredale? This is the Glow Time Full Coverage Mineral BB Cream. I saw that this brand is now being sold on the Ulta website, so I don't really know much about this brand. I have heard of it before, but I haven't used anything. So I'm going in with that on the back of my hand, taking my Love Is Lee Foundation Brush from It Cosmetics, and I'm going in. Ooh, this feels very, very cold on my skin. Is this supposed to be cooling? Cause that feels cooling. That does give pretty good coverage for a BB cream, let me tell you. I mean, it, it's a full coverage BB cream, but. Okay, I don't have a new concealer to test out, so I'm gonna go in with my trusty dusty Jouer Essential High Coverage Concealer. My favorite concealer ever. Okay, so I'm not exactly sure if that starry eye balm did anything. My under eyes look a little bit more dewy than they usually, well, I feel like they look a lot more dewy than they usually do, and they feel tackier. So it's definitely created a, a hydrating base underneath. It's like very glowy under there. And I feel like you might really like this if you have super crepey, dry under eyes. I don't know how I feel about it just yet. Let's see what it looks like when I powder my face. I'm gonna go in with my Beauty Bakery Flower Powder and apply this to my T-zone and underneath the eyes. Okay, so I got started on this eye off camera, but basically I'm just gonna take my Mooney Highlight from the Dream Street Palette and I'm gonna use this to highlight my brow bone. And then I'm gonna take the Dose of Colors Eyeliner in Splash. I'm a tight line with this and also apply it to my waterline. Now I'm gonna go back into the minimalist palette and I'm gonna use the same shade we used originally in our crease and I'm just gonna smudge that underneath the lower lash line and I'm pretty much putting this color down so that it can mimic the lid and everything looks cohesive and this does help blend out the archer when I go to put it on top on a pencil brush this one is from elf I'm gonna take a little bit of fix plus in the cap again like bare bit oh man that was too much <laughs> barely anything in the cap and then I'm gonna put a little bit of Archer in the cap and I'm going to run that on my lower lash line and create a very smoky effect. Now I'm gonna go back into the brush I used with that crease sh shade and I'm gonna blend out the edges here. I really want the lower lash line to be very, very smoky, like really smoky. Like I wanna bring it down on this whole entire like lower lash area. It's definitely one of those like messy, Smoky vibes. Okay, so that's enough of the archer. Now I'm gonna take these two pigments from the Zodiac collection. This is the water bearer and this is the crab. And this is gonna be that really intense blue inner corner that I feel like ties this whole look together. So because the water bearer is so pigmented, I'm not gonna use it wet or anything. I'm just gonna apply it dry and I'm gonna apply very little of this because this boy, this is intense. So I'm taking just a little bit on the cap like barely anything on a little pencil brush like this. I'm using a pencil brush because I want it to be very pointy because I want this to be a precise application. And I'm just gonna pop that on right on the inner corners. I know that looks messy. I know. I'm gonna take a clean little brush and blend out the edges. And we're just adding this as kind of like a base for the crab pigment because I really want an intense blue undertone. So that's why I'm putting this underneath, but I want that sparkly vibe the crab gives me. Okay, now I'm gonna take the crab pigment and I'm gonna apply it everywhere I put down the water bearer. I wanna make the inner corners very sparkly and intense. And I'm also gonna bring it on my lid a little bit as well. Pretty much putting this all over the place. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I am applying glitter glue on my inner corners first and then going in with the crab pigment. Okay, so this can get a little bit messy. So I'm just gonna take a brush with no product on it. I'm just gonna blend out the edges, 
dusting off any excess glitter. I mean, this isn't supposed to look perfect or neat or anything. Like, that's the point. That's the vibe. But I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. We're gonna go in with a glitter in a second anyway. And that glitter is this bad boy. This is the Lemonhead Los Angeles Space Paste in the shade Houdini. I can't even begin to describe how incredible this glitter is. I don't even know if it shows up on camera because this is actually impossible to photograph. I have never seen a glitter that's impossible to photograph. It's so holographic that it doesn't pick up on camera. And it's basically just this holographic intense purpley blue glitter and they actually just recently launched one called phantom and it's supposed to be like the sister of this only a blue version and this one's purple but in my opinion not even phantom compares to houdini like houdini is the best space paste they've ever had and i've tried a lot of them and they're i don't use any of them like this is the one i use all the time it's amazing so this can get a little bit tricky so be careful if you are using this like you can't even see the glitter it's so amazing i can't it has a very unique formula to where you only see the glitter if it's directly hitting the light Again, I'm not even sure if you can see that, but I'm just gonna take a little bit on my finger and I'm gonna apply this to the inner part of my eyes, like on the inner corners and on the inner half of the lid. I am putting that directly on top of the crab as well. Of course, this step is totally optional. And if you really want this look to be extra wearable, I would even skip the blue inner corners, add maybe the maiden in the inner corners, and then you have a super wearable look. But I want it to get a little bit more spacey. I'm applying a little bit of this space paste on the lower lash line as well but on the inner corners of course you want to be careful and make sure you don't get these face pastes in your eye like in your eye because if you do it will burn like it's burning me right now it never burns when i put it on my eyes like on my lids only if i get it in the eye so avoid that and then that completes the eyes again i'm not even sure you can really pick up on the houdini space paste but it's so cool in person it's just like mesmerizing and this eye look just reminds me of aliens is that weird? I don't know. Normally you would probably go in with some falsies if you're doing this look, but I'm actually gonna show you uh, the velvet primer that I spoke about in my favorites video. I wanna show you how I use it or how it looks. And I also wanna show you the new Pat McGrath Fetish Eyes Mascara because I haven't used it on camera just yet. And I really, really like this combo. I know it's a very ridiculously priced combo, but I, I just wanna show you just in case you're interested. So I'm gonna do that to my top lashes. <laughs> And then I'm gonna go in with my Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara on my bottom lashes because this doesn't smudge. It's a tubing mascara and a lot of mascaras smudge on my lower lash line these days, so. Okay, so the eyes are completely done. I love how, oh, please ignore my nails. Wow, they look really bad. But I love the way this combo makes my mascara look. I mean, it's really expensive, but I really like it. And this primer works with any mascara you put on top. I'm just currently using the Pat McGrath one. Oh, I forgot to talk about my new Cover FX drops. Ugh. I wanted to mix the brightening one in with my foundation. Damn it. That's fine, that's fine. I'm gonna take my Milk Makeup Baked Bronzer. I have been loving this. I'm gonna use this to bronze the skin. And then I'm gonna go in with this new bronzer from Pure. This is their Bronzing Act Matte Bronzer in Light. It smells identical to the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil bronzers and their, the Too Faced eyeshadows and the Tarte chocolatey smelling eyeshadows. It has that same scent. I'm assuming it's the cocoa powder or something. I don't know. But I'm gonna take my Wayne Goss 11 brush and I'm just gonna use this to kind of go over all the bronzing I already did just to help contour a little bit more. Even though I would normally leave it like this, I'm just gonna add a little bit more bronze and I really wanna use this bronzer, so. Okay, so, so far so good. Obviously, I have to test this bronzer on its own, and I, I've used this a couple times, and I always use it on top of another bronzer. I don't know why, but it blends really nicely. Even on top of this cream bronzer, I feel like it blends really nicely. It's great for contouring. I love the undertone. I feel like you really get sculpted. I like it. I like it so far. 
I think. For blush, I also don't have a new product to use. I'm going in with my Petal Primavera blush from Milani. It's one of their baked blushes that I've talked about a thousand times. It's so good. <gasps> Actually, no. I'm gonna apply my highlight first. I have been doing that recently. I keep going back and forth. I feel like I do that a lot and then I stop doing that and I'm back to doing that. I'm gonna apply my highlight first because I feel like every time you apply your highlight first and then go in with blush, it just blends so much nicer and everything just looks Mm, I like it more. So I'm gonna take my Fenty Beauty Chills highlight. Not the most wearable highlight, but I think it looks really cool with this eye look. It's very glittery, but it's just so pretty. I love the sparkle. Actually, I'm gonna use a different brush. I'm gonna use my Makeup Forever 140. This brush packs it on, makes it like way more intense. I don't wanna bring this highlight too far down because I feel like with really sparkly ones, once you bring them too far down on your cheek it tends to look really crazy and not as wearable i love doing that with like more natural colors but something like this i like to focus it just right here in this little swoop now i go in with blush Okay, so we are totally done with the face. I love how this highlight looks with this look. Last time I wore this look, I didn't use this highlight. I used the Bloom Time from Wet n Wild. But this just looks so cool with these inner corners. I'm liking it. So, as I'm sure a lot of you guys know, ColourPop has recently repackaged all of their lippy pencils. They now come in this packaging, which I think is so much better. It, you just see the color so much nicer because now the cap is in the color of the pencil. I'm all about it. I freaking love this. They also came out with their So Juicy Plumping Lip Glosses. I have all of them right here and I haven't used any of them. I am so excited. I'm so excited. I love ColourPop. <laughs> Of course, for this look, I am gonna go in with a more nude shade of coats. Of coats. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna go in with the lightest shade in, well, the second lightest shade in this bunch. Oh, this is BFF. I love this lip liner. <laughs> Okay, I don't know which juicy lip gloss to use. There's so many of them. By the way, that new sister brand from Sugar Rush that came out that's supposed to like target like a younger audience and all of that is, is cute, it's good. This is the worst freaking eyelash curler. I couldn't even curl my eyelashes. I had to do it with two hands because this is just like so wide apart and it, I hate it. Okay, let's pick a color, let's pick a color. I've never tried these on my lips. I've only swatched a few of them. I don't even know if they're super plumping. Oh my God, so many stickers. I don't know how plumping they are. I am a sensitive ass biatch, okay? So we'll see how I feel about this on my lips. Mm, oh, so pretty. Oh my gosh, these remind me so much of the Victoria's Secret, like, were they called Juicy Tubes or something like that? I used to buy them at the checkout in Victoria's Secret right at the front. They were in this packaging and I used to love those when I first got into makeup. Oh, I like this color. Okay, I'm gonna go in with this color. This is the shade Roundabout. Hmm. Oh my god, so shiny. Smells minty. Smells minty. I think those uh, Victoria's Secret ones... Cornelius wants to leave the room. Hold on. Fine. Don't hang out with me. It reminds me so much of the Victoria's Secret scent. I think it was minty as well. I think. It's like a mint chocolate chip almost. It's very juicy. If you're wondering how it feels in compared to their ultra glossy lips because I was wondering the same thing. This is much thicker. It feels tackier. The lip glosses are a little bit more slippy and not as sticky. This is a little bit sticky, but you know what? It's tingly, but it's not hurting. It's not really plumping it kind of. I mean, so far, it reminds me of the plumping effect that the Buxom lip glosses give you where it tingles and it's minty, but it doesn't hurt or anything. I'm getting the exact same vibe from this. And honestly, I'm not sure if this does plump your lips at the end of the day. It's obviously something I have to use more, try out more. They're $7. If anyone's wondering, it's loaded with cooling lip plumping peptides to create fuller looking lips. It has vitamin E. Oh, it's a non-sticky formula. It's a little sticky. I always feel. Like I say something and then I read the description and I'm like, oh, that's not how I feel. It's not super sticky, but I think it's it's sticky. I think it's even stickier than their ultra glossy lip, I think. I mean, it's no big deal. I honestly don't mind, especially when my hair is picked up. When my hair is down, I can't do a sticky lip gloss. I just can't. But when my hair is picked up, I kind of prefer a more tacky, sticky lip gloss because those tend to last longer on the lips. And I really like how this is making my lips feel. It's very tingly and cooling. I like that, but it doesn't hurt. So I like that even more. I'm into it, I'm into it. I can't wait to test these out more, obviously, and see how they do. See 
see if they really plump or what. But the Buxom ones don't really plump my lips either. They just make my lips feel overall smoother. The only thing I will say is it's getting a little goopy on the inside. But I had really chapped crusty lips before I put this on. So I like it so far. I like it so far. I'm into it. But yeah, guys, that completes this video. I really wanted to do this makeup tutorial for you guys because I know so many of you were asking me about it on Instagram. So... Here it is. But yeah, that completes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I tested out a few, just a few new things. And yeah, I mean, so far so good. I, I, I like how my makeup looks. I have to try out this BB cream more. It might be a little bit too matte for me, but I have to test it out with other primers and work with it and, and then make my decision. But that completes this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I love you so, so much. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. But yeah. Um, uh, okay. Repackage. Oh, that was loud. Petal Primavera, blah, blah, blah. No wonder I was drawn to it. I love the BFF flip.